Good morning, good morning, good morning, Mount Calvary. God bless each and every one of you. God bless everyone that has tuned in. God bless each and every person out there that's wanting to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. And as always, and as it should be, all of our custom to give our God some praise. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. For this is the day that he hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And how, shall, how can we rejoice in times like these? By keeping our minds stayed fast on him. Amen. And therefore, we can give our God some praise. Hallelujah. No matter what happens in life, no matter what detriment we go through, we still can face tomorrow because he lived. Amen. And that's a good thing. Jesus Christ is alive on the throne. Amen. He sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. So we're not in it by ourselves. That's a very comforting thought. We're not in it by ourselves, but we're in it with the Lord. Amen. And so I thank God this morning for the opportunity to share a word with you and to give a word from the Lord. And we do have a word this morning. Amen. For God has already spoken, and I want to repeat what thus saith the Lord. Amen. So I just thank you this morning, and I pray that your heart will be ready for to receive this word, and that your mind will be made up on that you want to serve the living God. Amen. And so let us take our attention to the book of Matthew, to the book of Matthew, the 27th chapter, beginning at the 51st verse. That will be the 27th chapter beginning at the 52nd verse down to verse 53, down through verse 53. So that'll be uh, Matthew, the 27th chapter, 51 through 53. And it reads as follows. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to men. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you're just excited about this reading of the word as I am. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank the Lord for the reading of the word and praying for your blessing this morning. And so now today I want to discuss this topic in God's story, everybody lives. In God's story, everybody lives. Amen. I want to just briefly tell you how this verse came to me. Uh, early Friday morning, the Lord came into a dream or gave me a dream. And in that dream, I was visiting one of the elders, one of the old saints. And the saint was telling me about how they had fixed up the room uh, didn't know why, but uh, the Lord knew uh, about fixing up the room. And the saint said, well, I want you to just lay down and get you some rest, uh, Pastor. I know you need some, some rest and just lay back and rest yourself. She said, I didn't know why God had me to fix up the doors and this and that, but I know now why God had me to do it so that the man of God could just get some rest. Amen. And as I lay there uh, resting my eyes, as the old folk would say, and resting up, I was able to see, for some reason, the front door of the place. And in came through the front door four preachers. And as they uh, came into the house, they greeted and said, hello. I said, hey, how you doing? And one of the preachers began to preach. And he said to me, he said, in God's story, everybody lives. And the other three preachers that were there with him as he went on, the, uh, elaborating on it, they began to encourage him. Some said amen, some said preach it, brother. And he began to say that in God's story, everybody lives. And he brought me to this passage and he showed me the saints that were standing there. And he said, if you look over there, there was a woman that was on drugs and alcohol. And he said, but now she's standing tall because in God's story, everybody lives. He said, if you look over there, you'll see somebody that was depressed. Somebody that was going through hell and high water, but they're standing at the edge of the grave because in God's story, everybody lives. And as he began to preach the word, I felt the Holy Ghost just rise up in me. As I was lying on the bed, I felt the Spirit of God resurrecting me up, raising me up. I literally felt the power of God moving me up. And in my spirit, I was on my feet. And I was on my feet like those that were standing at the grave. They were waiting on the resurrection of the chief 
uh, uh, man in charge, of the chief savior. They were waiting on him, the captain of their souls. They were waiting on him to rise from the dead in order that they too might be able to walk about and be seen by others. And my spirit was full of the Holy Ghost. And God walked my mind back. He walked me back over to Ezekiel. And he showed me how Ezekiel, he, he walked Ezekiel through the dry bones. And he asked Ezekiel a question. He said, oh man of God. He said, oh son of man, can these bones live? And I got to thinking about that. He said, can these bones live? And uh, Ezekiel said, oh, Lord, only you know. And I got to thinking along these lines. And then God spoke and said, but I answered the question of eternal life in Jesus Christ. I answered that question that, yes, man can live, even though he might be scattered everywhere, even though his thoughts might be scattered all over the place, even though his soul might be disenfranchised, even though he might have a hard time. He's been through trouble. He's been through hell and high water, but I answered the question in Jesus the Christ. Yes, these bones can live. Yes, your soul can survive. That is, if your soul is anchored in Jesus, the Bible tells us that the, the, the earthquake came and the graves opened up. In other words, the graves was opening up and the people were standing in readiness. It was those folk that had put their trust in Jesus Christ. And God walked me back over to a conversation that Jesus had with Miriam. Whenever she said, if you'd have been here, my brother Lazarus wouldn't have died. But then he began to say, he said, look here, Mary, let me tell you something. He said, now, if, if you think about it, he that died in me and still believe me, yo, though he's dead, yet shall he live. What I'm trying to tell somebody this morning is that your life is worth something in Christ Jesus and that you can live because in God's story, everybody lives. And when I got to thinking about this story about God's story, as he began to open up my understanding, I looked back and I started thinking, the Bible says that the word of God, the Holy Bible, it says that it's God's breathe, it's God's inspiration. But then God reveals something to me. In other words, God is telling the story. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation is God telling the story. And God told a story about Abraham. God told a story about how he delivered him. And he tells a story about Daniel and how he got him out of the lion's den. He's told the story uh, over and over about how he called the Apostle Paul. And now he tells the story about his son, Jesus Christ. I'm trying to tell you, saints, we can put our trust in God's story because in his story, everybody lives. In his story, those that have put their trust in Jesus Christ will one day rise up out of the grave. They'll be standing tall when they hear that trumpet sound. That trumpet will be like the earthquake. It will shake the earth. That trumpet sound will open up the grave. It'll be a new day for the saints of God. That old stuff that you went through all the stuff, heartaches that you had in this earth, it'll be done away with. I hear the old folks say there'll be no more weeping over there. I hear them say there'll be no more suffering and sickness over there. All the other stuff that you went through in life. I'm trying to tell somebody this morning that Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is on the throne and it's coming a bright day one morning when the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise up. Somebody ought to give their God some praise for we're looking for a glorious day. The Bible says here in Matthew that these were the old saints that had fallen asleep and we know from the New Testament when the Bible says they fell asleep it is saying they was waiting on Jesus Christ. They died in the Lord and if your soul is sick, is anchored in Jesus you ain't got to worry about the storm. I'm telling you today we're all focused on death. This coronavirus is spreading like wildfire and we all are focused on when am I going to get it? Is my friend got it? Is somebody in my family going to get it? We're so focused on death but in God's story I'm glad to say in his holy word God is not focused on death. He's focused on life. The Bible teaches that Jesus said God said I am the father of Abraham. He didn't say I was. He said I am because God is the God of the living. God's story is about how we can live. Jesus said he come to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Don't you want that abundant life this morning somebody? Don't you want that life this morning? I'm telling you now if your soul is 
faith is in Jesus, you'll be able to get up just like the saints did. The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I need my strength renewed. But that renewal of strength won't come now. It'll come whenever Jesus cracked the sky. Whenever the captain of our salvation, when he returns to the earth, we all going to rise up. We'll be changed in a blink and a twinkle of eye. In other words, I'll put my grave clothes on and I'll get some righteous robes. I'll put away everything that I used to be and I'll become what God has called me to be. Wouldn't you like to have that this morning? Wouldn't you like to have that today? I saw these saints. They had fallen asleep in the Lord. They had been waiting and waiting and waiting. But on that third day, when the captain of their ship, on that third day when Jesus Christ come out of that borrowed tomb, on that third day when he got up, I'm telling you the saints were glad. Won't you be glad when Jesus come back? Won't you be glad when he cracked the sky? Won't you be glad whenever he comes to get up? I heard the saints sing the song, some glad morning, some glad morning. Somebody out there need to shout some glad morning, some glad morning. When this life is over, I'll fly away. Some glad morning when Jesus come back, we all gonna fly away. Those of us that have entrusted our souls to his care, he's coming back to get us one day. These saints here bear witness of the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. When he got up, they got up. And here's the first fruits. They're the first fruits, amen. Jesus is the first fruit of many brothers. Those that shall follow him, amen. Those that shall be resurrected up into the glory of God. Amen, hallelujah. This morning, I'd like to encourage you that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. The Holy Spirit is telling us that God is focused on life. He's not focused on death. He's focused on life. He sent his son that we might have eternal life. God has always been focused on what is making us better. God is not focused on a problem. He's always the solution. And we got to recognize in Jesus Christ that he's given us the opportunity right now. He's given us the opportunity to come to him. He's given us an opportunity. As I saw in my vision in my dream, as I saw my, myself being resurrected up, oh, I felt that Holy Ghost power. And I knew I was asleep, but I felt the power of God grab my soul. And I could only think about that's how it will be when I'm sleeping in my grave. That the power of God, oh, the power of God without any of my help, the power of God without any of my strength will raise me up. It will grab hold of me. I don't have to worry about grabbing hold of it because the Bible said the Lord knows all of those that are his. When that trumpet sounds, I ain't got to worry about the ears of flesh here because my spirit will hear it. My soul will know because I died in faith. I died believing in Jesus Christ and I'm waiting on his return. And when the captain blows the trumpet, all of those that were waiting on him, the grave will open up and they too will come out of the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah saints. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to carry, encourage you dearly. Oh, I want to encourage you that in God's story, everybody lives. In his story, everybody lives. And that what makes it so interesting, this revelation, is that God is keeping a book. Oh, God is keeping a book. We're in his story. We in God's story book. We in God's plan. The plan of salvation, saints. We are in his plan. It's God unfolding that plan in our lives. It is God's story playing out before us. God is praise, going to give praise to the saints when he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. I'm trying to tell you this morning, the whole of scripture is God's story. He's telling the story of his son that he sent. He's telling the story how he anointed him with the Holy Ghost. He's telling the story of how he anointed him to raise the dead, give sight to the blind. Why is God telling this story? Because he wants to encourage us that Jesus' story and what he did is our story too. When he got up from the grave, that's just not his story. That's our story too. Because in that bright day, when Jesus Christ comes back, we all shall get up and the story, the story be in the end. And so I thank God this morning for each and every one of you. All of you tuning in this morning. 
This word excited me when God revealed it to me. And I pray that it helps you. I pray that it gives you strength and nurture you and give you encouragement. Stop worrying about the coronavirus and all the stuff that is around you. Just do the practical things and let God do the rest. God is focused on living. He's focused on life. And we're focused on death. We're focused on just um, marginalizing our step. We're focused on restricting our movements. We're, we're focused on those things. But God is focused on life. God is focused on expanding us. God is focused on developing us. God is focused on making us more like Christ. Amen. Through these pandemics, there have been saints of God in the storybook that God tells that have went through famines, that have been thrown in the lion's den, that have went through been burned at the stake, but yet their story didn't end. Why? Because they still lived in the presence of God. When Stephen was stoned, the Bible says that Jesus stood up. He stood up in honor of a life that was given to him, but yet in the presence of God, Stephen still is alive. Amen. Stephen is still there in our absence from the body is present with the Lord and we too will be still alive so let us thanks take this word today let it infuse us and let it encourage us, encourage us that we too shall continue to live and that God almighty in his story everybody lives remember that in his story everybody lives no matter what you're going through no matter what you've been through you still hear God bless us, your soul. And God will continue to bless you until he bring you home. Those out there don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sin. All I want you to do is this. You got to be honest with yourself. Do you want to live? God's focus on living. Do you want to live? And if you want to live, call his name. Call out to Jesus. Call his name. I can testify of his goodness. But you should have your own testimony. But you got to call him. Call on his name. Give him the opportunity. As I told someone one day, is that before you do some, some harm to yourself, before you decide to maybe commit suicide or something, give your life to Christ because God can use you. Give your life to Christ because God can use you. He can use you. You might not have no use for you, but God got use for you. Give him a chance. Give him a chance and I guarantee you he won't let you down. He will not let you down. And so saints of God, friends, family, those that are out there, God bless you. May the Lord continue to smile upon you and may he continue to give you strength. And in Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. God bless you saints. May God bless you.